Dante Hill. It's Joe Shasky. And it's wet out there this morning. So drive slow. Drive slow, little homie. Drive slow, Kanye. We're going to get there. It's a Friday. We're hitting the weekend. And last night, March Madness came to the Bay Area, specifically at Chase Center. Bonte's on his way coming in. He'll be here any minute. Uh, I can't wait to pick his brain because he was out there last night. And I want to contrast these two things. When Levi Stadium was being built, I remember they were selling me on all the different events that would come to Levi Stadium. We have got to have a world-class venue. We've got to have the World Cup. We got to have the Olympics. We're going to bid for the Olympics. We're going to get a Super Bowl. We're going to get a national championship game. And we noticed that when Levi Stadium was built um, and, and they started hosting games in 2014, they were already on deck for Super Bowls. They were already on deck for a national championship. And it feels like after having both of those events, it feels like it's not coming back around for Levi Stadium. And I want to contrast that with last night at Chase Center because I think. And maybe I'm wrong here, guys. I feel like we're coming back to Chase Center over and over and over again for these big-time events. And this goes back to location, location, location. If you're buying real estate anywhere in the Bay Area, they're going to tell you, location, location, location. You buy a five-bedroom house and you're in the middle of the valley, it's not going to be the same as a two-bedroom house in the middle of Oakland or San Francisco. I and mean, we know this, location, location, location. It absolutely matters. And so watching the game last night, it felt big. You're in the city. You're downtown. The, the court looked just absolutely spectacular. The vibe is coming through the television. Jim Nance on the call. I mean, does it get any bigger than that? He gave us a hello, friends. It was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. And, and I'm not here to take a dump on Levi's, but the reality is it felt very one and done regarding the Super Bowl, regarding the national championship game. And I'm watching those games last night. Arkansas beating Gonzaga. Watching Chet foul out with a couple of minutes to go in that game. Verticality being discussed all over the Twitter timeline. And then later on, seeing Coach K go up against Texas Tech. That was awesome. I mean, that was absolutely awesome. Just seeing 95-7 the game posting Coach K walking onto the Chase Center floor. Yeah. Did it not feel big time? It looked like, you know, walking through the tunnel. You're talking about that shot? Yes. Yes, that was it great. It just felt big time. The single shot. Absolutely. Yeah, you, knew it was, you knew it was a big... I mean, it's Coach K's possible last game. And, and look, I think... And I believe me, I, I go to Levi's all the time. Like, I, I, I enjoy... Once I actually sit down and watch games at Levi's Stadium, it's, it's a beautiful venue for just sitting and watching the game. But there's more to the ambiance when you're going to a sporting event. And I look at what AT&T Park, and now called Oracle, what, what it feels like for a big time playoff game when Fox, even if you're not at the game, but when Fox does like this flyover and all the towels are waving and you see downtown San Francisco, aesthetically, you feel like we are being popped in to something that is bigger than the game and the game itself is big because it's a playoff game. When they were coming in on CBS last night, guys, every break, we're here in downtown San Francisco. It just felt big. Yeah, they had the shot of the you had the shot of the Bay Bridge and everything. Even though they still show that for 49er games, even yeah. if they're being played in Santa Clara, they'll show that but, shot of the Bay Bridge. But, but when they do yeah. like the draw in on Monday night football or right. or, or Sunday night football, because we've had a lot of Sunday night footballs, you don't get that that wide stadium shot from the blimp or, or from a from a real high up where it kind of zooms into the the stadium right. because you see all the surrounding area is a bunch of warehouses. Right, right. In great well, America. Well, I do think, though, that with, with football, I don't know if a national championship is going to happen at Levi's again. I do think a Super Bowl will. Because, I don't. Because there's only so many locations well, they have see, for the Super Bowl. There's only so many. And the Bay Area is one of the biggest areas in general in the United States. Like, they can, they're, they're going to have another Super Bowl at Levi's. I disagree with you, and and here's why I say that. I'm a big uh, conference guy because I do it for my other job. I do a lot of conferences, and there's a reason certain cities continue to get conferences because the way that they are laid out makes it very easy for travel when there's big parties together, right? For example, San Diego is a big conference town. Now, A, the weather plays into that because people from the Midwest during the winter want to go visit the sun, right? But secondarily, you have all of the hotels in a very close proximity, and and you have an ability to move around and migrate around town very easily. When you have the Super Bowl itself, the game being played down closer to San Jose, 
I mean, infinitely close. I mean, you're right on the on, on the on the city lines right there. And then you want to have all the festivities up here in San Francisco. I mean, this is what I've been arguing with Mark Purdy for 20 years over. He's like, San Jose's a world-class city. Yeah, but if you're an NFL executive, all right, for example, and you're going to have the Super Bowl festivities, you don't want to be in downtown San Jose. And it's not a disrespect to San Jose. People want to be in downtown San Francisco. They want to go to Fisherman's Wharf. They want to go to Union Square. Whether there's, you know... Feces on the street or not, there is a cachet nationally about the worldwide city that is San Francisco. And I just, I don't know, after seeing the egress, ingress, seeing all of the logistics of Super Bowl week, I just don't know if we're ever going to get another one. But I'll tell you this, Stephen, and I want you to jump in. I know for a fact we are going to get a Final Four at some point. I could feel it. Like There's the, no doubt. The, the way that was set up last night, and think about no it. Doubt. If you're staying downtown, if you're staying downtown, you're Jim Nance, or I mean, he lives in Monterey. You could stay at the at the JW. It's a short little jaunt down the block. The next thing you know, you're hopping in and out of your limo. You're right into Chase Center. I mean, you're sitting on the water. You've got the bridge staring you in the background, and it's a world-class venue in a world-class city. Again, I'm not disrespecting Levi's. I'm not disrespecting San Jose. Just watching the game last night from the comfort of my home, and I can't, Bonte just walked in. I can't wait to pick his brain over it. I just, I don't think Levi's is going to get a one, guys. I really don't. I think it, I think it will. I think it, because there, there are play, there's ways to travel up to San Francisco now that there weren't at the time. Like they have BART all the way down in San Jose now, so they got different ways of transport besides just driving. They have the Caltrain and everything, yeah. so they have plenty of that. They got plenty of places to stay down. I just think there's going to be one more at least at Levi's because well, there's only a pick of like. Ten stadiums well, from the, that the NFL uses, and Levi's is one of them. So let me let me let me just tell you about going to LA right now. I just think LA is going to be in the mix every four or five years. Miami will always mm. be in the mix. New Vegas. Orleans, Vegas is going to be in the absolutely. And what does Vegas have? The convention like atmosphere. You've got to be able to house everyone and make transportation easy. The ingress egress of all the corporates, all the corporates. And when you go down to SoFi, Bonte and I went down there. You're 10 minutes away from the airport, and right near the airport is where all the hotels are. So if you've got corporate dollars flooding into your town, it's just so much easier. And then SoFi as a stadium, mm. SoFi as a venue, mm. I mean, it's it's incomparable. It's mm. it's literally incomparable. Bonte, you just walked in the door. I know traffic's crazy out there. Give me the chase experience last wow. night. At, at, I, I mean, that must have been awesome. You know what? I didn't even want to get out of my car because of the way you set the tone this morning, talking about Chase Center and talking about the event and talking about San Francisco and the way they host events. Let's start here. When San Francisco got the Emerald Bowl, right, down at Oracle Park, and they configured it, you know, took it, turned it into a baseball, I from a baseball a stadium to a football field. Yeah. That environment, that vibe was electric because, as you said, People can walk from downtown. They can go to Oracle Park. And then when you leave, you get right on the end, Judah, or you can walk the Embarcadero mm -hmm. and get back to downtown San Francisco, whether it's Bart, Muni, uh, walking down, having something to eat. And so when you think about last night, and I was eager to see how this region would flock to Chase Center for college basketball. How did you get down there out of curiosity? Because oh. I do think this matters and when it comes to well, these these venues. Well, I How drove down. I drove, drove down, down, but it, it's it's a 20-minute drive from the South Bay, yeah. from the peninsula. Yeah. So it's quick and easy, and the way to get out of there, the freeway's right there. I, well, no. What, 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 two, two, 280 yeah. right there. Yeah. And, you and if you want to go down third, you know, you're going to get out of there, and you're going to get down there. So I get down there, and I walk in. And I look at the court. I saw the court yesterday, but then seeing it again with Gonzaga and Arkansas on the awesome. floor, I said, wow, San Francisco <laughs> is hosting March Madness. Now, I drove I drove up a few years ago to go to one, uh, to yeah. go see the March Madness yeah, when yeah. UCLA played Cincinnati, like one. It's Oregon, a really cool Rhode Island. Stadium. And when I got there, I was like, wow, March Madness environment yeah. is just, it's just different yeah, yeah. because you get the underdog like Arkansas. Arkansas is the underdog in the entire stadium. If you're not a Gonzaga fan, you're rooting for the underdog. Of so it gets under 15 minutes, and Arkansas starts pulling away, and all the fans start to root against Gonzaga. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, wow, it's lit. And Gonzaga's basically playing a de facto road game, just like Duke last yeah. night. Duke's losing to Texas Tech. You got Arkansas fans rooting for Tech. You got Gonzaga fans rooting for Tech. And all of a sudden, you look up at the Raptors, Shasky, and I'm, I kept looking up to see the empty seats. I said it's just as packed as a Warrior game, <laughs> if not more. Like, there was 
you see a couple patches of yeah. empty seats, but from the top of the rafters where we say you're sitting next to yeah. Jesus, it was packed, packed. Well, now, I, I want to talk about the environment inside. Right. I, I'm sure you didn't catch any of the television broadcast, but like I'm big into the marketing, right? Because yeah. they're, they're selling you something right. on that broadcast, right? right? Jim Nance is going to sell you old school, yep. but he's also going to sell you pomp and circumstance, mm-hmm. right? Like the one thing the San Francisco Giants do really well, pregame ceremonies, pomp right. and circumstance. Oh, they do that the best. They're incredible. They're the best. Like yeah. They're incredible at it. Jim Nance is as well. Like When you hear Jim's voice and the way he sets things up, Man. it feels bigger than it is. It's next level. But he kept going, from Arkansas all the way to downtown San Francisco. <sighs> It has a cachet to it. And if you're sitting in the middle of the country and you hear downtown San Francisco as opposed – and, I'm, again, I'm not being an elitist. I'm not right. trying to be location discrimination right. against San Jose. Right. But San Jose just doesn't have that cachet. No, and, and I've gone down to March Madness in San Jose where they've hosted yeah. the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight. And there's nothing against the SAP Center, the SAP Center, no, however you call it. There's venue. nothing but driving down to San Jose. Like, if the game starts at 4 o'clock like the Gonzaga-Arkansas <sighs> game did – you leave the Bay Area. You leave San Francisco at three o'clock, trying to get down there to a four o'clock you're not, game. You're not, you're not making no, it. You're not. you're not making it because one of one's a mess. Two eighties a mess. And just the venue, just the vibe. Like Chase Center has this vibe where it's enclosed. The lighting so, is a bit dimmer, yeah. and the acoustics are so good, and the sight lines are amazing. Like you think about the Oracle, where where they had the yacht, uh, the yacht races out mm-hmm, there mm-hmm. with uh, Ellison and everything. That's a big event out here in San Francisco. Cup. America's Cup, thank you. Mm-hmm. America's Cup is huge. Uh, you think about so many games they've had with USF in downtown San Francisco. Or heck, you go to the Pete Newell Challenge at Oracle Arena yeah. where Duke played Stafford mm-hmm. and Stafford came all the way back. That was an electric event, but it's right here in San Francisco or Oakland. You get those spots there. That's what made the Super Bowl a disaster. It's because you had Santa Clara it, yeah. and everybody's like trying to get yeah. to San Jose. Like Media Day was in San Jose. All the events is in San Francisco. That doesn't make any sense. No, it, it, the, the equivalent would be, you know, in, in some other area. Hey, we're going to have a, everything in the city of Dallas and then everything else outside of Dallas. How right. far is Arlington outside of Dallas? Right. It's it's pretty far. It's about 30, 35 minutes. Okay. N- now double that time drive because that's the difference, that's during, a difference during traffic time. Yep. Here's the other thing, B, and this is something I think the Giants, I noticed this early on with the San Francisco Giants Stadium. Let's say you're not living in the city and you're numb to it or whatever, and you're from the peripheral of the Bay Area. Maybe you're not even from Oakland. You're from Stockton right. or Antioch or whatever. Sacramento. You hear this a lot when you're in the, in the, the bleachers. We're in downtown San Francisco. People come out of their yep. cars, they get out of the vehicles, however they get transported in, and they are in downtown, and they've got like a bounce in their step right. because the event feels bigger than life. It's you like got going the to Bay the opera. Bridge right there. You got the yeah. Bay Bridge right there. You can take all the those setting, photos, Jasky. So I've been to Chase Center now, I think six times right. total. Six times total with my wife, for right. example. Every time we go, it feels like a big event, like we're going out, it right? Does. And it, not, no knock on, on Oracle. I used to go to Oracle all the time. Right. But I'd park in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. We'd maybe have a drink or two in the, in the, in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. It felt very, you know, you're just chilling. And then you'd go into the stadium, and it was all about the basketball. Whereas when I go to Chase Center, it's just there's a bounce in your step because Dude. you pull up right in front. Uh, I took Ubers. Yep. You pull up right in front. Yep. You get out, and everybody else right. is getting off streetcars right. and getting out of Ubers. Yep. And they all have that same anticipation that simultaneously. Dude, you see the big scoreboard out there where you're allowed to watch games yeah. out there in Thrive City on that big scoreboard so if cool. you can't afford a ticket. Dumpling time, the God City. You're at the restaurants and Warriors team yeah, store. Exactly. Just when you're walking up, you're like, wow. Yep. And I see all the all the newscasters from Arkansas, from Lubbock, Texas. It feels and they're big sitting time. there setting up their shots and they're wide eyed. They're like, this is amazing. Of course. We need to get back out here. Then, of course, you see the tea tray coming down, <laughs> giving you that city feel. I got to say, Shasky, you hear me when I say, you know, March Madness and Duke is coming to Frisco. Duke is coming to Frisco. It lived up to the billing. There was something about Coach K, and For I sure. heard you coming in. There was something about Coach K walking onto that court like, oh, my gosh. That is Mike Krzyzewski. And then my boy Hef, he was with me. He's yeah. in all he had the <laughs> time the of his life. His Instagram was wild, right? We're sitting right behind a bed. He's losing his mind. We go off, we start walking through the court, right? Right between games. Mm-hmm. Gonzaga loses. Eric Musselman's going crazy, right? Arkansas's all doing a pig suey. I'm like, this is amazing. I've never been to an SEC game down south. No, this, is, uh, this is this yeah. is amazing. They're doing oh pig suey and it's just loud right they're bringing that arkansas flair to chase center 
We walk around and we see Paulo, uh, Paulo Banchero from Duke. And this guy's a monster. He's big. He's thick. I'm like, oh, my God, this guy looks like an NBA player. Hef and I are sitting there on the sideline. Hef yells, Banchero, baby, it's your night. He looks over at us as he's going through the layup line, stops what he's doing, pounds his chest, and throws up the peace sign at us like, it's go time. Now, I don't know if that happened. Duke's never out here. No. So for us to see that, like, wait, this is the Duke Blue Devils. The potential number one pick in the NBA draft is out here pumping his yeah. chest towards us like, I'm here. I'm out here. And when that game played out, and I'm just looking at Jim Nance, I'm looking at Raftery, I'm looking at Grant Hill, I'm looking at all the sidelines, Curry's in the box, Bob Myers, Vivek, Kirk Lake, Mike Dunleavy Jr. in his Duke gear, and I'm looking around like, oh my gosh, March Madness will be back here. It will be back in San Francisco. I don't know about the Super Bowl. I don't know about the Super Bowl at Levi Stadium I, because it, you have SoFi. You have Allegiant Stadium. Vegas. Seattle wants to get one. Yeah, Allegiant Stadium yes. in Vegas. Seattle yes. wants to get a Super Bowl. They want to get in the mix at one point. Absolutely. And it's in downtown Seattle. So I think it's going to be really hard for Levi's to get a Super Bowl. Yeah. It's going to be really hard to get a national championship. Because mm-hmm. I went down to the national championship when I saw Clemson in Alabama. Oh, that's right. The sight lights you guys were great. Fighting over press passes. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. And it was amazing, an yeah. amazing event. But I just remember Dabo Sweetie said, yeah, we won a championship somewhere in California. They even know where they were. Well, that's the. I mean, that's a problem. You imagine I mean, that happening when you're playing in San Francisco. Well, yeah. Levi's did have more attendance for the Super Bowl than any other Super Bowl for the, ever since then. So you got to take that it into atten- You got to take is. that into account. Well, and the, the way they built the stadium is, you know, they, they have so much uh, standing room only areas. You know, so right. it's it's a matter of how many people they want to allow in. You know, that doesn't surprise me. The thing that I keep coming back to, B, and and again, you can call me elitist. You can say that I'm doing location description. Discrimination. The right. reality is, when you talk to people around the country, you know, and, and, and let's say you live anywhere in the Bay Area, you, most people say, I live in San Francisco, right? Whether they live in Concord or, or, or whatever, they might right. say, I live just outside of San Francisco, right. but most people say that. It has a cachet to the rest of the country. When you're in New York, when you're in Chicago, when you're in Miami, and you say, like I'm Jim Nance, Arkansas is now in downtown San Francisco. There's something to be said for that. And I just, watching the game last night, and I am not a college basketball fan by any means. How was that vibe on TV? I just kept thinking, this is big time. Was it loud? Was it like. Oh, yeah, it popped off the TV. Also, the CBS cameras, and, and this is not a knock on NBC specifically, but their HD cameras are ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, They've yeah, spent yeah. ridiculous amounts right. of money. So seeing the stadium in in the HD, you know, light that they showed it, Dude. it just looked unbelievable. Look, Tracy it, Wolfson on the sidelines. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw Tracy walking I mean, all so over the cool. place doing hits, man, it's, with her Gucci belt on and everything. So like like here's the thing, Shaska, we can take this. I know we got a break here. We'll we'll pick this up on the other side. Jordan in Union City, we'll get your call on the other side as well. So hang on tight cuz I want to hear your thoughts about the final four in March Madness, but one thing that has always been underrated about the city of San Francisco, whether it's the XFL with the San Francisco Demons, the Spiders, when the Sharks played at the Cow Palace, the Niners at Candlestick and the Court's Keys mm-hmm. are, uh, heck, you want to go back to the Warriors playing at the Cow Palace. You want to talk about you want to talk about the Giants when they're in the postseason. What does Joe Buck say? This is one of the more underrated home field advantages yep. throughout baseball, yep. especially in the playoffs. That crowd rocks. Yep. They rocks. We saw that from the minute it opened in 2000 mm-hmm. all the way till now last year in Game 5 against the Dodgers. It rocks. The city of San Francisco, and it's not just San Franciscans. It's people from Marin. It's people from the peninsula. It's people from the East Bay. They know how to put on a show and represent for their region. And that made me proud yesterday Hell to be yeah. inside of Chaser and said, they represented oh. for March Madness. They put on a show. I got to put a bow on this. Joe Lacob and Peter Goober said oh. that they were going to build a gem of the city, and they pulled it off. They pulled <laughs> it's it off. so hard to do they that. They pulled it off. In the day of where the critic has more avenues to critique right. at any turn, they nailed it. They nailed it. And I, that, that's the only way I can say let, it. They let, just nailed it. Last night's vibe. Had me excited about the Warriors postseason. 100%. And all the ushers and all the security guards that I read it to yesterday and all the love we were getting showed yesterday, Shasky, about the Morning Rose, they were saying, just wait until the playoffs. 
Wait until the NBA playoffs. That's all they kept saying. So, Jordan, we get you on the other side. Uh, and that will be sponsored by BMW Fairfield. BMW Fairfield now open in the Fairfield Auto Mall. They provide a luxurious all-encompassing experience to address all of your BMW needs. Visit BMWFairfield.com today to book your visits. That's BMWFairfield.com.